Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're going to talk a little bit about building a gaming PC here in late 2020 and really just about how bad of an experience it really is trying to get all the parts together for one. Now there has been a lot of hardware launched here at the tail end of 2020 from AMD especially, but also Nvidia has launched its RTX 3000 series of GPUs, at least the higher end ones, the 3070, 3080, and 3090s. And the biggest problem with all of these launches, like universally has been, you can't actually get a hold of them because all the bots got all of the GPUs and all of the game consoles and just everything. It's all it's all gone. AMD CPUs are gone. AMD GPUs are off the shelves. Nvidia GPUs are gone. It, it's just really not a great experience right now if you're trying to build a gaming PC moving forward. And that's a shame because there are a lot of really good prices on other components right now here in late 2020. Now, for those of you that are in fact patient people, this isn't really the end of the world as you can get yourself through the rest of 2020. Hopefully here in quarter one, 2021, we're going to see good availability or at least general availability at all of these products coming into stock on store shelves and then also in those uh, online retail channels. But if you're an impatient person and you want to get up and running as soon as humanly possible, then the secondhand used market might be the way to go because you can get yourself started with some stopgap parts and then upgrade down the road and realistically you could probably resell your stopgap components and take very minimal losses on them while getting yourself up and running and more importantly gaming right now or at least in the very near future as opposed to a few months from now. Now I do want to briefly mention the CPU side of things. Right now it does look like AMD is almost universally the way to go if you're looking for new CPUs and new platform in general. In which case I would be recommending something like a B550 motherboard with one of the new Ryzen 5000 CPUs. The biggest issue with that of course is those Ryzen 5000 CPUs are just generally not available. So if you're really trying to get up and running and gain as soon as humanly possible, you're probably going to be looking at a Ryzen 3000 series CPU. I'd recommend the Ryzen 3600. Again, though, if you can find that in stock, I've seen it in stock in a couple of uh, online retail channels, but it is definitely in short supply on your major ones like your Newegg's or your Amazon's. So I would just check up wherever you can find one of those CPUs at a reasonable cost around that 200 ish dollar pricing for something like a Ryzen 3600. And if you're really trying to get up and running now, that's probably your best bet. And then down the road, you can, of course, upgrade to a Ryzen 5000 series CPU, you will absolutely take a loss on the CPU if you're going that stopgap solution with something like a Ryzen 3600. However, again, if you're wanting to get up and running, that's kind of what you need to do. But what we're most concerned with today is the GPU side of things because it is a little bit more dire right now than the CPU side. At least the CPU side has some alternatives that are readily available at reasonable prices, whether it's a 3000 series Ryzen chip from AMD or even an Intel build. There are some at least valid alternatives the GPU is sort of the uh, the heart and soul of a gaming build and uh, none of the new GPUs are available and they've also made some of the older GPUs completely terrible values while you wait. Like there is absolutely no reason to go pay retail pricing for something like a 2080 Ti for instance, knowing that early next year we could have 3080s readily available at much cheaper prices. So we're looking at stopgap solutions today. And the first thing you need to consider when you're coming up with a stopgap solution is what types of games are you planning to play on your rig because that's going to inform you as to what type of GPU you're going to need. If for instance you are playing the top uh, most recent AAA titles like Cyberpunk coming out early December then you're probably going to need a somewhat strong GPU even as your stopgap solution. Something like a GTX 1070 would be an excellent solution if you can find one for around that 200 ish dollar pricing and you can sometimes Sometimes find those on EVGA's B stock website, but your best bet if you're really looking for a GPU that's readily available is probably going to be eBay. If on the other hand you're just looking at mostly esports titles and while you do want to run your games at the highest frame rates possible, you are also willing to accept lower frame rates for a few months while you wait on those uh, GPUs that you actually want to come back into stock. Something like this, something like a 1650 or even a GTX 1650 Super or a GTX 
GTX 1660, even if it's brand new, might actually be the way to go because especially these 1650s and 1650 Supers, you can find for sub $200. And because they're newer-ish GPUs, they should still hold their value reasonably well even once the RTX 3070s or 3080s are back in stock. And that's partially because at launch at least, AMD and Nvidia have largely ignored the lower end and let their sort of older cards handle the lower end market. So these newer GPU launches haven't really had a big impact on pricing of older GPUs that are more targeted towards the budget or lower end of the scale. And if power is not a concern with your rig, maybe you have a really beefy power supply, then something like a GTX 980 or an R9 290 might also be excellent solutions because while they are somewhat power hungry, they are still performing pretty well in most games here in 2020, especially something like a 980 or one of those uh, eight gigabyte R9 290s. They do perfectly well, especially when you're talking about esports style games. Those GPUs are gonna give you really good frame rates eating up your power bill, sure, but at the same time, they're very, very cheap compared to something like a new GTX 1660. Like you can find GTX 980s fairly easily on eBay at really good prices, like $100, $150, and you could probably, within that $50 price range, find yourself a 980. And just for your reference, this card, this 980, three fans, really good cooler design, keeps this card nice and chilly. This was $130 shipped to my door. And yeah, this thing, even in AAA titles, is still performing okay. In eSports, it's an awesome GPU for a really good price. Now, the key with these stopgap solutions, whether you're going with an older card or even a newer car like a 1650 or a 1660, the key here is getting your investment back out of that card. So you're really looking for good deals on these cards. You're not looking for any old Amazon listing of a GTX 1660 at whatever price it happens to fall at. You're looking for the cheapest ones possible, knowing that here in a couple few months, you're gonna be flipping that card. And of course, one of the things you're gonna wanna do with these cards is make sure they're nice and clean when you go to resell them, whether you're looking at the local market in something like Facebook Marketplace or selling it on eBay, which I would recommend going with the local market just because there's less overhead cost when you're selling it locally versus selling it on something like eBay. So a lot of these used cards that I do buy and get really good deals on are quite dirty when I first get them. And if you can clean them up and make them look as close to new as possible, you're gonna get more of your investment back out of that. And in some cases, you can even turn a profit if you get a really solid deal to begin with and you can turn around and sell it locally with very little overhead cost whatsoever attached to it to the point where with these stopgap solutions, you can get yourself up and running and gaming sooner here at the end of 2020 and take advantage of those good prices on things like RAM or SSDs or even PC cases and then get all of your original investment for that stopgap GPU back out of it so you can reinvest that into your GPU upgrade down the road. But that's kind of my rant right now on stopgap GPUs and getting yourself up and running here in late 2020. I do want to hear from you guys, especially those of you out there looking to build a new gaming PC here at the end of 2020. What's your go-to GPU solution right now if you can't find one of those new GPUs from either AMD or Nvidia? Are you looking at some of these stopgap solutions? Are you recycling or rather reusing one of your older GPUs? Maybe you had a previous build and you're just hanging on to that for now and waiting for those uh, newer cards to come back into stock. Basically, just let me know what you're doing to solve this issue of just not being able to find these newer GPUs in those comments down below. And of course, if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.